Hi, it's Nick. I'm just showing you one of the engines that my neighbor gave to me. I'll start explaining a little bit about it and then after that we'll see if the motor works and whatever else that's underneath the uh, body. But as I said, it's the Santa Fe and the number is 8351 and the lettering and the numbers are in black. I like the color scheme that they have, which is the silver and then you have the blue and it's broken off with this yellow strip that comes all the way down to the back and whatever you see on this side of the body is the same on the other side so we'll start with the side over here we have a number board but there's no number it's just a red plastic and I believe when the light goes on, it, the light will shine through it. But when we take the body off, we'll uh, take a look and see. I also like the way that the yellow stripes come along the side from the front. And uh, you have a ladder here, which goes to this door. And the windows have plastic in it. Then as you go back, you have little windows here, but of course they're all molded. You can't see through them. And then you have another ladder here, which gives you this door here. You have some nice grill work up in this area. And the trucks are plastic, but they have some nice little detail right in this area. This is uh, probably the air cylinder for the brakes. And you have your grease caps here. And uh, you have your fuel tank right in this area. And you have two type of gauges. And then you have another gauge here, which is probably the sight gauge, so you can see how much fuel you have uh, in the tank. Now we'll, we'll tip it up a little bit. Well, the first thing I notice the horn is missing. There should be a horn right here. So uh, whoever the previous owner is, it's not there. Uh, why, I don't know. They have some nice rivet detail on the top. And uh, they have this metal uh, arm here. We'll find out what it is uh, when we take the body off. Then if you move down a little further, this is the, uh, the exhaust fan and grill. And then you have some more nice river detail here and some handrail or and another square in here. And here's that yellow stripe. Now we'll go to the back. The back has, you know, it's a nice door here in the porthole. Uh, you have a door uh, frame and some lines in here. And this, believe it or not, looks like a leaf spring. To me, anyway. I don't know why they would have one up there. And this is a, a coupler, but it doesn't operate. But I like about it is this, there's a spring in here, so... When you put it on one side, she springs in the, into the center. So it always be in the center. Now we'll bring it around and we'll check out the front. Um, the front, as you can see, has does not have a coupler. Uh, but in the mold of the plastic, you have a little door here. Not sure what that represents. And then you have the Santa Fe. And it's uh, black letters, and you have the yellow and black border. But uh, I don't know if you can see this in the camera. Maybe I'll bring it up. Um, the paint is missing here. The end is, is part of it's missing. And the, uh, there's some scratching in here and in here. Um, but besides that, that the horn is missing in this part right in here, uh, the body itself is in pretty good condition. All I'd probably do is wash it with a little mild soap and water. So what we'll do now 
is we'll take the body off and see what's in it. After we take the body off, we'll start to see if the motor runs. Right? So let's take it off. There's just a screw right here. Um, it's a Phillips screw, so we'll just take it off and see what's underneath the body. Well, before we do that, let's just check the underneath. And the way it looks when the light goes on, it will illuminate the windows, the headlight, and also those red number boards right in here because I can see the light shining through it. So I guess that will look nice uh, running around the track. I will put this on the side. Now here's the uh, the motor. Let's take a look at it. All right. Well, as you see, this here's the headlight, which illuminates the cab and the headlight, the headlight and the number boards. This switch here, since it doesn't have a directional switch, this is the switch that it'll make, in one position it'll make it go forward, another position reverse, and the position it's in now, it's not touching either one of those contacts, so you wouldn't get power to the motor, so it won't run. And uh, the reason they did that, and they still do it on some of the old 27 uh, uh, engines, is let's say this engine is on a, a siding. But you have another engine, you want to run it, but you don't want to run this one. So once this is in this position, no power go to the motor. But the other train, you can make it go forward, neutral, reverse. But of course, this won't do anything because no power is coming to this motor. But of course, if you want to use this one, you don't want to use the other train. You put that in the, in, in the neutral a switch and then you can operate this one but uh, now what I like to do is I like to just turn the, the motor on and see if it works so uh, let me get hook up the transformer just take a few moments and uh, we'll get some power on the engine see if that motor works so here's the positive. And I have a piece of wood that I'm going to put underneath here so that when it goes on, the wheels won't, won't hit the, uh, let's hope that works out. It's kind of wobbly, but we'll see. Put the uh, neutral on. And I'll put this on one of the contacts, and let's see what happens. Ah, running, and that's running in the uh, forward. Now we'll put it, and this should go reverse. Yeah, it's in the reverse. Then, of course, as I mentioned, you put that in between, and you sh you'll get a light, but you won't get any, the motor won't go on. So, we know the motor works, and just by looking at it, and the way it's running, it doesn't hesitate. No, no. So, I'd say that motor's pretty good. But I probably what I'll do is I'll, I'll take it apart and uh, see what the condition is of the brushes and the rotor. And uh, we'll do that next. I tell you ahead of time though, fellas, when you take this off and you when you clean everything, you put it back in. Sometimes it really uh, it's a little difficult to do it because of the angle and you don't want to, you're concerned about not breaking the wires. And those brushes, if you don't get it right, they'll, it has a little spring here, and it'll just push it, and then you gotta get the, get the, uh, uh, the bushes, and 
you know, put it in. And then sometimes you're lucky and it'll just go in one, two, three. So we'll see how, how lucky we're going to be on this one. So let's disconnect this. And uh, we'll take the motor apart. Just two screws hold it. Yeah, yeah, Phillips screws. So let's take them off. Try to keep my right hand away from it so you can see it. But there might be a point where I might need to use the, the right hand and uh, might get in the way. But we'll see. Yeah, where did that go? Oh, I see. One moment. get the other one. Okay. The reason I'm holding this down, <laughs> sometimes the springs are so strong that it just pushes up sometimes. But I don't think this one is going to do it. It has some spring to it. Well, let's see, take this off without doing any damage to the wires, right? Nice and easy. And i put it over here in case those brushes fly out. I don't want it to go on the floor. All right, yeah, there they are. That's your brushes. All right. I'll tell you, just looking at the commentator, that's not bad. Really not bad at all. But we'll take it out. Reason why I want to uh, check in here, see if I need to put a little grease in there. Well, I'll tell you, I see there is some grease in there, which is which is good. It tells me that the previous owner greased it. Looks pretty, looks pretty good. Uh, I'll just put a little oil over here, see if we can get the light so you can see in there. Yeah. Hope you're seeing that. Right in here. So I'm just going to put some oil right in here, on the shaft here, and some on the gear right in here these are the outside gears and that one here he put a little grease on it i use this white lithium grease so maybe since i have it open just put a little bit you don't have to put a lot in because as it goes it'll work all around the gear now i don't put and it's not recommended to put grease on the outside part of the gears, which would be right in this area. And the reason why, if you have grease there and you're running it around the track and it picks up any dirt, the grease, it'll stick to the grease and uh, you'll have a, a bigger problem. So you never put grease on your outside, just in this little wheel here, just a little bit though, right? And uh, there's a lettuce little spot and that's where the, sh the end of this shaft right here sits in. So I always want to put a little oil in there for a little lubrication. Not much, just a little drop like, like that. Okay, now what we're going to do is look at the rotor. Now that's pretty shiny. So that tells me Either this engine wasn't run, run a lot, or the previous owner, you know, took it apart and cleaned it. But you can still see there's a little bit around here. So I'm just going to get a little alcohol on a rag. And you got to be very gentle. Put it on the rag. You don't want to spray that with alcohol uh, because you don't want to get it on the, uh, the wiring. 
Of course, it, it could do damage to the uh, coating of on the wiring. I don't know if you can see that. It's getting a little shiny. You know, if it's really bad, they have this real fine sandpaper that you just go very lightly over it, and you go the the, the shape of it. You don't go across it. You want to always go the sh the the uh, direction of the turn. Okay, now just to demonstrate something. See these lines? Now there's no dirt in there. So this is very clean. Was, but a lot of times you get a lot of from the brushes and you, you know you just get your screw and you just clean it out like that. But I really don't have to do it. I'm just doing it to show you like that. And you never blow on it. You don't want moisture on it. You just get a rag and you just clean it. Now we'll look at the at the uh, uh, the brushes. Now those brushes are not bad. Uh, there's a little dirt on this because I was running it. So uh, maybe I can just clean it with the rag instead of using sandpaper. Because if it's really bad, I, I usually use sand. But I'm telling you, the rag is very Good condition. You see the shine on that? I hope you can see the shine on that. And we'll do the other one. I mean, I've worked on engines where the brushes, they're almost gone. And they're black. But uh, these are pretty good, I'll tell you. No, they're good. Now, since we cleaned the road, we cleaned the brushes, we put grease on that main gear and then oil on, on the gears that turn the wheel. Now we're going to put the motor back without breaking wires and without these brushes flying out. So uh, I'm going to try how I usually do it, and I hope I have enough room because of these wires, because of the angle, that it'll go in nice and smooth. So we'll see. Okay. So we'll put the brushes in. Now the brushes, they have a slot. Um, right, right in here. And I try to get that slot to fit, line up with the spring. It's like a little piece of wire. Uh, so that's what I, I try to do. And uh, it's, let's see if we get that. All right, that went in there. Yeah. Don't. And now we'll do the same with this one, hoping that the other one don't fall. I don't know if you can see this little wire, but it's, it's a, actually it's a spring. Yeah, see it went in. Now, let's hope it stays in there. <laughs> and. Uh, And we'll uh, get the commentator. Now, the reason I do it this way, uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, is that when I go to put it in, the brushes are right up against the commentator, so it'll stay, and I don't have to worry about them falling out. Sometimes it works this way. If not, then I'm going to have to put the commentator back in there and very gently turn it and maybe use a screwdriver so that the brushes don't fall out. But let's see what happens. Trying not to get my hands in the way. 
just not enough wire clearance, I think. Something is resisting it. I know what it is, too. It's the wires. But like I said, I don't want to break any wires. So let's... Whoops. Whoops. Something just happened. Something just happened. Okay. It might not work this way, fellas. I was hoping that it would work this way. Ah, brushes fell out. Okay, we got to do it the old-fashioned way. All right, here we go. Now what we do is we put the rotor in, commutator in. Make sure it's in. It is. It's spinning. It's nice level. <clears throat> now we get. We get. Let's see if we can see that. We get the brushes to go in. Get the other one. I'm sure there's many ways of doing this, fellas. But I can only do it the way that I usually do it. So, well, I want to face it this way so in case the brushes fall out. She's not lining up. There we go. We got it in. And the brushes. I don't know if you can see. Oh, no. One fell out. Oh, well. I thought I got it. Yeah, one. See how it came out? Well, try it again. I'll try it again. All right, here we go. I think we got it this time, fellas. Let's check. Yep. I don't know if you can see it. Right there's one brush. And there's the... It just went off. I have a low battery. But basically... This is uh, how you put the motor back together again. And uh, see if I can finish this before it goes off again. It's always something. And what we'll do is we'll just turn it on to make sure it works. And this one I'll hold in my hand. Oh, maybe I can use the wood. Oh. She works. And then she works there. So this engine is ready to be put on the layout and to have some fun running it on the layout. So I hope you enjoyed the video, fellas. Take care. Have a great day. Bye.